think I have a lot of board games, you guys. Hello everyone, how is it going? Welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to um, show off my board game collection. Uh, I guess a little bit of background. So my love of board games began mostly with my high school drama friends, because um, I was in the drama club when I was in high school. And uh, a lot of the friends that I made loved board games. And then once I graduated college, um, I decided to just, you know, visit a game shop to go to a board game night. And I made some new friends there. And some of those friends I actually play D&D uh, &D with regularly, along with board games as well. And it's been about two years since then, and uh, I have amassed uh, quite a collection now. I'm probably gonna have to organize these somehow. Like I, I, like, I didn't realize just how many I had until I laid them all out, and I now I'm like, wow, Nola, you got a lot of board games. <laughs> so I have decided to organize my, my board games um, into a bunch of different categories. So we have the classics, we have the card games, the party games, the dice games, uh, the time sinks, and the social deductions, of course. So yeah, um, let's go with the classics first. So let me see what I got. I have two uh, versions of Uno. I have a classic Uno, and I have uh, this Justice League Uno that came out when the Justice League movie came out, and it includes a special um, rule. Now, honestly, the art on these cards is not that bad. Like, it, it actually does look kind of cool. So, I like to have it anyway. And of course, I have Sorry and Clue, which are both, um, sealed. <laughs> they, they both have their, um, plastic wrap on them. I haven't opened these yet, but it's okay. And then I have a Banana Grams Party. I got this at Marshalls for two dollars, you guys. I was like, wow, what a steal, what a steal. I saw it and I was like, you know what? This is a popular game, let me try it and let me play it with some of my friends. And I ended up really liking it. So yes, two dollars well spent. Oh my gosh, ah! So first of all, we have Star Realms. Um, I really like Star Star Realms. This is a deck building game. This deck is designed for just two people, but if you buy another copy, you can play with four. And this has like 50 billion expansions and stuff like that. Like this, this is just solid. Sushi Go, classic. If you never played Sushi Go, this is also a really great uh, card game. It's super simple, easy to learn. You can play um, with uh, from two to five players and it, you can finish this in like 20 minutes. Um, and of course, you, do you see all the cute sushi on here? Look at all the cute sushi. Oh my goodness. And then you have Hanabi. Uh, this game is really hard. Oh my gosh, this is actually a really hard game. You need to like, you need to have either really good luck or you need to have incredible communication with all of your friends. But also your friends need to be like super smart. Like this is a very hard game. But it is co-op, and it, it's a really fun game as well. Um, I really like this game, despite it being so difficult. <laughs> Honestly, I've never played either of these two games. I just found them and bought them. Same thing with, oh, I have a, another one. I have one, Avocado Smash. I saw these, they were, they were really cheap. I decided, you know what, I'll get them. Maybe one day I'll play them, and I haven't yet. Yeah, also this one, this one is um, Kill Dr. Lucky, the card game. Um, I played the board game, Kill Dr. Lucky, one of my friends has the board game. This is apparently the card game version of it. Um, I gave it its own little box and I thought I would play it one day. Still haven't played this game. <laughs> the game, okay, so this is a really great game. Um, also, I probably have ruined uh, this, like, this... Uh, this dumb inside joke that we, I've had since high school. You, you're losing the game there. How many lives did I just ruin just now, okay? Let me know. <laughs> this is a number counting organizing game. I really like I really like this game. This is this is a good game. Okay, so I have Unstable Unicorns and uh, one of my friends got me Llamas Unleashed for Christmas. Um, even though his dog chewed up <laughs> one of the corners. <laughs> I like it, but it can get kind of lengthy, especially if you've never played before. Then I have 
Love Letter. I have a special edition of Love Letter. We actually have three different princesses. We actually have a prince. We have our prince here. We have uh, one of our princesses here. We have another princess here. Um, I just love the art for like all the characters in, in this uh, Love Letter deck. Like here, you know, here's a knight. You know, here's the minister. You know, here's the soldier. Like, I just, oh my gosh. Like, this is such a pretty deck. This is a fantastic game if you want to, like, pass the time really quickly. And it's so small. Um, I just keep it in a little dice pouch. This is, like, perfect if you need to pass the time. If you need to burn, like, 10, 15 minutes. This is fantastic card game. Tea Dragon Society! You guys, this is the cutest game. This is the cutest deck builder. It's a deck builder, you guys, but like for kids, okay? Like, look at the little baby dragons. Look at the, they're like little, and there's like little flowers. It's so cute. Look at them. Look how cute they are. Yeah, this is a really good, like, first deck builder for like a younger player so I do recommend it and then my sister got me this game Sakura Arms um this is a two-player fighting card game apparently this game like slaps in Japan like apparently this is like the the card game that people in Japan just love there's tournaments for this game apparently um, I tried learning how to play it. It was a little confusing. The game looks cool. The mechanics seem cool. It almost gives me a little bit of a, how do I say this? Like if you're familiar with like Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh or you know, those types of trading card games, the battle system, this is very, it, this does have heavy uh, elements that stem from that. Then of course I have one of my favorites right here. This is the DC deck building game. This is a great deck builder. Um, and there's so many different versions of this. Like there's um, a bunch of DC ones. There's, I believe a Lord of the Rings one. There's a Harry Potter one. The artwork is super cool. Um, and on oh, more than 50 of your favorite DC Comics characters, all in one game. Wow. So here's one of my gaming backpacks. Yeah, when I'm trying to stuff a bunch of board games in there, you know, a gigantic box like this is gonna take up the entire backpack. So that's why sometimes I like to downsize my board games so that I can fit more board games in, in my backpack. Does anybody else do that? Am I the only one that downsizes? Let me know. Boss Monster is a really fun game as well. Basically, you are like a monster villain in um, a like a like a 16-bit universe. And your goal is to kill as many adventurers as possible uh, through, you know, you building your own villain dungeon. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's a fun game. It's a fun game. And then of course I have a bunch of my standard decks. One of the nicer decks, this is a custom made Sailor Moon deck. So my roommate um, was given one of these when she was on set and uh, she, gave this to me. So I want to show you guys the art. Here's a standard number card, you know, very, very pretty, right? Here we go. So here is a pretty Sailor V. Here is Jupiter, Serenity. I'll go ahead and show you guys some of the rest of the face cards. So here we go. The cards are a little bit thicker than regular playing cards, so I don't use this deck very often for actual playing. Um, this is just something I like to keep just to look at. And I actually love playing with a standard deck because actually my favorite card game is a classic deck card game called uh, Critter. And there's a Chinese version that uh, my mom taught me when I was like, seven and we used to play this card game a lot yeah maybe i'll teach you guys how to play that someday because critter is definitely one of my favorite card games 
of all time. It's 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 fun. Party games. Okay, so I only really have like three dedicated party games. Um, one is obviously going to be <laughs> Applebee's to Applebee's. I feel like Apples to Apples has kind of become the modern Uno where it, it's just so popular, a, a card game that everyone has a copy. Um, the Apples to Apples box is huge, so I, I downsized. And then I have a game called Codenames as well. Now, personally, I used to really like Codenames, um, but then I became an English tutor and I started playing this game uh, with SAT words instead of normal words. And I think that kind of killed my love for this game. Geek Out and Geek Out Pop Culture Party. This is basically a trivia based game. Um, where the whole goal of the game is for you to flex your knowledge, okay? So if you're one of those nerds that likes to, you know, show your superiority through the amount of names that you can remember, this is the game for you. And of course, Geek Out um, focuses more on, you know, geeky stuff, where Pop Culture Party cares more about like film, television, books, music, that type of thing. So the first game I talk about is going to be called Ya Blew It. The cool thing about this game is that the dice in this game, it, it's still technically a dice game. It's just the dice are like little dynamites. It, it, they might as well be the equivalent of a D8. And the actual uh, package that this comes with instead of one of these boxes is a gigantic dynamite. Like that's, it's thematic, it's thematic. And then here's another uh, interesting game, Push. Push is a little bit like, how do I describe push? It's like Uno with dice. I have a game called um, Dragon Slayer Dice. Do you guys see these Dragon Slayer Dice? Like these are kind of cool. It's basically like, um, I don't know if you guys have played a uh, zombie dice. Uh, if you if you know how to play zombie dice, this game is, is pretty similar to that, except there's maybe like one or two extra rules and um, there's dragons. Unearth. Unearth is um, Unearth is a very interesting game. Basically, it's a point collection game. I like Unearth. It's not one of those games that I like um, go for immediately. Like I'm not dying. Like oh my gosh, I really want to play Unearth. But um, yeah, if if I'm ever bored and I decide, huh, I want to play dice. I, I want to roll some dice. Let's play Unearth. You know, it's like one of those types of situations. Oh, sorry, Mike. Are you okay? You're fine. Then we have big money. Big money, you make not not just not just millions, not just billions, you make zillions of dollars. Zillion dollars. Um, this is a very, very simple um, money collection game. It's like, I would describe this as simplified monopoly. It's less of a time crunch and it's less soul crushing as well. I really, I actually really do like this. Before there were stars, the best way I can describe this game is that it's more of an improv exercise than a game. So actually here, here is a, literally a chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. And then if you want an advanced version, uh, you have chapter one, two, three, and four. If you are not good, at coming up with stories or ridiculous stuff on the spot. This is probably not going to be the game for you, but if you are like an actor like me, or you're someone that, you know, enjoys like an improv challenge, or you like making up dumb stories on the spot, or even if you're like a writer and you are just so bored and you have no idea what in the world to do with your story, you can even go through some of these constellation cards. Um, just randomize, pull one out and then, you know, challenge yourself with that. So yeah. And then of course we have one of my favorite board games, Roll for the Galaxy. If you enjoy rolling like six billion dice, like look at all look at all the look at all the dice. Look at look, this is this is all this is all dice right here. Okay. I mean I don't want to get too into it. Like you can look up videos about it, but this is definitely one of my favorite games. And I tried downsizing this game. I really did. I, I tried to get the right size box to downsize this game and I just couldn't do it. Like this box actually kind of is required. <laughs> okay, what do we have next? We have time sinks and strategies. Okay, so let's take a look. 
Ugh. This one is Welcome Back to the Dungeon. Um, this is an interesting game. It's not, ah! This is um, a game, I don't, re I don't usually reach for this game all that often, honestly, but it's, it's, a, it's a decent game. This is another one of those games where it's not really a time crunch. Um, this is actually very quick. I would say you can definitely finish this game in under 20 minutes, easily, no problem. This is like 20 minutes tops. It's also one of these games that I downsize. In this game, you have a bunch of gems um, of different colors and you want to collect as many points as possible. However, you don't know how much each gem is worth. Um, and the only way to tell how much each gem is worth is you have a bunch of cards with a color and a number. And if you have that card, you know that the gem is not whatever you have. So if you have a purple seven, you know that the purple gem is not worth seven. So I actually do like this game if you wanna play something uh, nice and quick as well. Pandemic. Oh, this is a classic game that board gamers love. This is one of those games where you need to make sure everything is under control early, okay? You need to have all your ducks in a row early and you need to keep it that way. The moment that something goes wrong is when it can just snowball into like, ah! This game is very popular amongst board gamers for a reason. It's really good. Um, I actually got this game for like 15 bucks. I was very lucky, okay? I, I saw it on sale at Marshalls. It made me very happy. Same thing with this game. I saw this game at Marshalls for $15 too. And this game is normally $60. This is a, this is one of those complicated games, okay? I like this game, um, but yeah, this, this is, um, go look up a video about how to play this game because it's a lot. And of course, the ringleader of the time sink that I have is Escape from Dolce. Oh my gosh, this game takes a long time to play. Can you guys read that? One and a half hours to two hours for a short campaign. Three to four for epic. I have played one epic campaign and it took like five hours because we spent the first hour setting up and trying to learn how to play. And two of us had already played the game before. I think that Escape from Dolce is a good game, but it's not perfect because this game, while this game has so much character to it, like, you know, we got like some aliens, we got like, all these crazy characters. You can play as a cow if you want, and Amelia Earhart as well. It's crazy. This game is insanity, actually. This game is incredibly combat heavy. Actually, this is the perfect comparison. If you guys have played a tabletop RPG, like Dungeons and Dragons, Call of Cthulhu, like Numenera, you know, Pathfinder, like uh, something in that realm, okay? Take the combat aspect of that and then just play that for four hours. You start from the bottom level of a base and then work your way up to the higher levels to escape fighting a bunch of different enemies and mini bosses. If you enjoy the purely dungeoneering aspect of like D&D, &D, then you are going to love this game. So yeah, this is uh, Escape from Dolce. This game is like $100. Uh, I luckily got it for free because I won a raffle. How many of these games have I won from raffles? At my game store, there used to be, um, like once a month, there would be a board game event and they would have a raffle. And I won almost every single one. All of these, all of these. So here are my social deduction games. Who is a social deduction last one standing game? You are not on a team. You are your own team and you have secret cards that allow you to do secret abilities, but because your cards are face down, no one knows whether or not you legally can use that ability or not. 
And of course, calling people out on their BS, being like, no, I don't think you actually have that card. You can't use that ability. Um, and calling people out for their BS is one of the big mechanics of this game and why it's so fun. So yeah, I love Koo. I crush at Koo. One Night Werewolf is a really great game. It's obviously you have villagers versus werewolves. And then you have um, other additions where I also have like One Night Vampire, for example, um, which adds new mechanics, it adds another um, faction. It's literally Werewolf or Town of Salem, but done in one round. Highly recommend, really great social deduction game. I love this one. And of course, we have the star of the show, Secret Hitler. This is my own personal copy that I printed and made myself. Online, if you get the, the properly boxed version, that's like 40 bucks. But on their website, they have the PDF if you want to do a print and play. Like you can literally print out everything that is required to play the game for free. And I think that's an amazing thing. So what I did is I took that and I laminated some of it and then I made them my own stuff. So like, here's the boards and I put little stickers on it. I turned it into my own little personal project. And then I got some card sleeves to um, sleeve all of the cards, like all of these. One of my friends has a regular box copy, but I still carry this one around just because it's a lot smaller. And of course, if my friend isn't around that has her copy, we can just use mine. So anyway, those were all my board games. Obviously, um, these aren't all the board games that I've played. This is literally just my own personal collection. Obviously, I have friends that have more board games. They have their own collections and I used to play at a game store regularly. So I've probably played an additional maybe a hundred board games, more than the ones that I have here. So yeah, I wanted to make a video about all my board games. On my Twitch page, I do have an extension that um, leads to some of my favorite board games. And you guys can use my personal link to buy the board games and then I get a small cut. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, bell, and stay healthy. I'll see you guys later.